Hello and welcome back everybody. Uh, this time around, second time, uh, we're going to be looking at the alternating series test and uh, I decided to break it into two parts just to make it so that it's a little bit easier to swallow rather than having a really one long lengthy video. So uh, in the first video, we talked about how to solve for or how to show that an alternating series is going to converge or diverge using the alternating series test. So in this video, we're going to talk about what is the error, uh, meaning like say, uh, uh, how accurate is it uh, for you to use a certain number of term in the alternating series uh, in comparison to like the actual answer? So uh, in this case right here, uh, here's my question then. So let's say that we have a series and what I want to know is uh, what would be the error for using seven terms to estimate uh, the series of summation from one uh, from the first term all the way to infinite term of e to the negative n uh, times negative one raised to the nth power. So that is to say again, if we were to only use seven terms in the series, the first seven terms in the series, uh, how accurate is that in comparison to what the series actually converges to? And I know it converges because this this is an alternating series uh, where your terms are going to individually get smaller and smaller and also it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So assuming for right now that we did the alternating series test, uh, let's go ahead and find out uh, what is this going to be equal to then, okay? So I want to know what is the sum of all of this. Now uh, if we were to write it out, then that means that uh, if I'm going to use the first seven term, then s of 7 is going to be equal to negative e to the negative 1 plus e to the negative 2 minus e to the negative 3 plus so on and so on all the way to the last term which is uh, minus e to the negative 7. And if you use a calculator that is going to be approximately uh, negative 2, 6, 9. So that's using the first 7 term. I want to know how accurate is that in comparison to the whole thing in relation to s of like say infinity in this case, right? Uh, if there is such a thing or uh, technically the correct terminology is I want to take this answer of s of 7 and compare that to limit as n approaches towards infinity of s of n. So how does that compare to in this case? Well, earlier, uh, I mean, in the previous video, I showed you kind of like uh, using a number line as to what's happening in an alternating series uh, like this. So if you take your uh, terms and you add them together, you're really just kind of going back and forth in the number line. So you're going to go, you know, forward, uh, in one direction and then backward in another direction, forward in the next direction, and then backward in the next direction, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, if I'm only using the first seven terms, then that means that all the terms that I did not use, then that would be considered the error because I did not add it up. So one would say the error is going to be equal to uh, all the terms that I did not add. So that means uh, a of 8 plus a of 9 plus a of 10 plus a of 11 and so on and so on and so on. Okay. Um, so the question is, okay, well, how do you deal with uh, something like that? Um, well, um, the thing is, keep in mind that this is an alternating series test. So what that means is uh, these terms right here that I just introduced, a of 9, a of 10, and so on, so on, so on, those are going back and forth between positive and negative and positive and negative. What I'm trying to say is that, hey, you know what? If that is actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller, then I'm claiming that a of 8, which is my next term, is going to be greater than all of those terms add together a of 8 plus a of 9 plus a of 10 plus so on and so on and so on. So what that means is if you want to know what is your upper bound the error, then all you need for the alternating series test is just going to be the next term. Okay, I want to know uh, then it's just going to be the next term. Uh, so in short, then that means that my error that I'm looking for is going to be the total sum, right, of the whole thing minus the seven terms, right? And then that right there is going to be less than the next term, which is going to be t of eight in this case, or actually, I guess, a, a of eight in this case over here, okay? So the next term, a of eight, uh, is going to be e to the negative eight. So that right there is approximately 0 0.000335. And that right there is gonna be my error then, okay? So your error for using less than seven term is going to be less than 0 0.000335. So this is probably one of the easier uh, errors that you can detect because, again, it's just going to be the next term. And again, it's all because all these terms, once again, are alternating. So therefore, the sum of them is going to be less than, well, the first term to begin with. Okay. 
Um, the next thing I want to know is, okay, well, for the same series, I want to know what is the upper and lower bound of my sum. Okay, so that is to say, I want to know what's the upper and lower bound of my sum. Well, let's refer back to that equation that we just had earlier over here, where we have the error is equal to uh, the absolute value of the summation of, S, uh, of the whole sum minus S of 7. So from previously, we can say that the sum is going to be uh, minus S of 7 is going to be less than A of 8, which we did solve for in this case. Uh, and that is approximately equal to 0.000335. Okay. I want to know what is the sum, right? The total sum is going to be bounded or bound. So uh, I think the first thing I need to do in order to solve for the sum in this case is probably get rid of the absolute value. This is just an inequality problem. So that is going to be S, uh, the sum minus S of 7 is going to be bounded in between uh, 0 0.000335 and also negative 0 0.000335 just to get rid of the absolute value. Now I'm going to go ahead and add S of 7 to everything. So S of 7 added to the right-hand side. And remember, we know what S of 7 is. We solved for it over here. So that is going to be uh, S of 7 and then plus 0 000, uh, 0.000335, whereas this guy is going to be S of 7 and then minus 0 0.000335. And that right there is going to give me my upper bound and the lower bound of the sum. Uh, put it all together uh, just to kind of save you a little bit of time. That is going to be negative 0.26952. And then my upper bound is going to be negative 0.26885. So then that means that the sum of the series is somewhere within this ballpark. And the way it works is, you know, the more sums that you uh, decide to add, you know, like beyond the seven term, the smaller and smaller this interval is, which will give you a more accurate uh, answer than as a result. But the problem is having to use so many sum, uh, having to use so many terms, that's just a lot of grindy work, which is what we're trying to avoid. Okay. Now, the last question on this case is going to be, how many terms would you need so that, you're, uh, so that uh, you want the following to be true then? Uh, how many terms will you need uh, to sum if you want your error to be within two decimal places? Okay, so how many terms do you need so that your error is within two decimal places? So if I'm saying that the error is within two decimal places, then that means uh, that uh, when you were, if you're writing out S of n right here, uh, your first nth term is going to be something like, say, 0 0.00, and then the rest of these are going to be actual numerical values, okay? So here, uh, what we can do is, once again, use the fact that your error is going to be your next term in this case. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, since the error is supposed to be next term, I'm going to take the next term, uh, which I am going to write as e to the negative n, right? So that's going to be represented as my next term, where I need to figure out what that n is going to be. Now, this number right here, that has to be less than uh, or equal to 0 0.00. And if it's two decimal places, why don't I just go ahead and put a bunch of nines over here, right? Because by the time you add the next term, I want to make sure that it's smaller than this thing right here, because anything uh, bigger than it's going to be, well, it's, it's not what we want. So we're going to take this and put it into the calculator and solve for it. So uh, I'm going to take the ln of both sides and then take the negative of it. And it turns out that n is going to be approximately equal to 4.605 in this case. Uh, so that means I'm you know, assuming that this is kind of like an equal sign right here. So uh, if we were to kind of like you know, translate what's happening here, here's what I'm getting. Okay, Let's say that you take the fourth term right here, a of 4. And then uh, that is going to be the absolute value of it. Uh, that is equal to uh, e to the negative 4, which is approximately uh, 0 0.183. If I sum up the first four terms, what you're going to get is negative 0.264. Now, by the time I add to the next term, I want to make sure that I'm not moving any more than two decimal places. Well, let's see what happens here. If I take a of 5 right here, right? Uh, and then that is going to be the absolute value of it because I just don't want to deal with negative for right now. Uh, e to the negative 5, that's equal to approximately 0 0.0067. And so S of 5, according to my equation, if I add up all those terms, it's going to be negative 0.270 over here, right? 
Um, so notice what's happening is if I'm going from the fourth term to the fifth term, uh, I am unfortunately not within two decimal places. So what that means is I need to basically go beyond the fifth term in order to get my decimal to be less than two, uh, two decimal places. So if I solve for S of six, then it's most likely the next one is going to be 0.27 and then it's going to be, or maybe 0.28 at the, at the most. Okay. So in conclusion, so here, since n is going to be equal to 0 0.4605, we're going to round up in order for it, to, uh, for it to be within that boundary that we actually want. So the conclusion is therefore n has to be uh, equal to 5 uh, in order to have what I want, which is going to be two decimal places then. Okay? All right, so it's going to be round up. All right, well, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time then. Take care.